Yeah. Uh, speaking of the current president, though, you said that she will be out of office in around 130 ish days, right? Yeah. And the reason that is, is because there's an election coming up this coming Saturday, right? Yeah. Um, so what are your thoughts and predictions about the election? Well, uh, my forecast is that the current ruling party, DPP, may have a small victory. Um, they have access to various government resources to join the election. The current ruling party, um, um, they they constantly threaten Taiwanese people with China's threats by saying that the other two candidates will surrender if they were elected. Mm -hmm. uh, just two days ago, on January 9th, Taiwan Ministry of Defense issued an emergency warning. The content is air raid alert, missile fly over Taiwan airspace, be aware. Wow. to all Taiwanese people. In fact, this was China launching a satellite. Hmm. This strategy, you know, it sounds like a joke, but this strategy did help the DPP. The Taiwanese ruling party won the election four years ago and eight years ago. So the ruling party DPP continued to use these methods. And there's always about one third of the voters in Taiwan believe that and um, th this year's presidential election in Taiwan right. uh, has the best chance to political party rotation in Taiwan history. Mm -hmm. However, due to the lack of uh, unity among the opposition parties, they are likely to split 60% of the votes. And in the end, the current ruling DPP will narrowly wins, I guess. However, if voters are smart and rational enough, strategic voting behaviors might change the outcomes. Okay. So just to give the viewers a little background on the election, right? The elections in Taiwan, the presidential ones are every four years, very similar to the US, right? Mm -hmm. And also like the US, the president is term limited after two full terms, correct? Yeah. So the current president, Tsai, she's been in office for two terms, so she's yeah. term limited. She cannot run. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the candidates who are running and your thoughts on each of them? So I believe there are three candidates running, right? Yeah. Okay. One is the uh, the uh, DPP, the, the existing ruling party, and the other one is KMT. Is long um, the the ruling party since mm -hmm. 1949 to right. year 2000. Mm -hmm. And the other one is a new party called Min Zhong Dang. Oh, I forget his English name is too new. <laughs> so Min Zhong Dang, okay. Um, I think uh, to me, I have been a long-term supporter of the DPP, which is the current ruling party. However, uh, my only wish to this election is to change the ruling party so that Taiwan can truly realize democracy with the supervision and checks and balances. Mm -hmm. The current ruling party has been corrupted for the past eight years. And for instance, they closed a mainstream TV station that opposed them. This is something that has never happened since Taiwan's president was um, elected, democratically elected since uh, year 1992. Okay. In, in, in addition, the ruling party controls the judiciary to persecute those who oppose them. These evil deeds are the reason why I no longer support mm -hmm. the DPP. Okay. As for which other party will I support? Um, in fact, except for the DPP, the policy of the other two political parties are not much different. Whoever is elected will be positive, positive for Taiwan, I think. I'm a typical rational voter. I think I will vote for the party that has a chance of winning. But I can't really tell you because it's so close. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it, it's still a dream because my Taiwanese passport was confiscated and I couldn't get on the airplane at all. Right. I couldn't go anywhere. So it was impossible to return to Taiwan to vote. Okay. Now, given the fact that, you know, 
U.S., China, Taiwan, right? This um, this trilateral relationship has been very uh, complicated, right? Do you think this election will uh, further complicate the issues between U.S., China, and Taiwan? Well, if the DPP continues to be in power, arms dealers around the world will be very happy mm -hmm. because there will be endless business. And the United States will also have a role to play between Taiwan and China. Although China is not happy to see the DPP in power, but in their hearts, we might know that the DPP governance can give China the opportunity to conduct military exercises. This will allow China to gain leverage in negotiations with the Western world, appease the Chinese military, and at the same time, shift the focus of the domestic uh, economic depression. On the other hand, if the current two opposition parties are in power, they may be able to form a coalition cabinet, allow Taiwan's democracy uh, to have more uh, internal supervision and checks and balances, which should be good in terms of domestic affairs. As for cross-strait relations, they will definitely improve to my opinion. As for relations with the United States, I think they will continue to grow sta um, uh, stably and, um, and not change much. Okay. So basically it's actually kind of interesting, right? So you're saying that actually from China's point of view, they would rather want DPP <laughs> to win because if DPP wins, then it kind of you know gives them more leverage, gives them an excuse to be aggressive, right? Towards Taiwan. Um, but if uh, one of the other two parties win, then they might actually work together. And that's not, that's not necessarily good for, for China's uh, foreign, foreign policy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, yes. Right, yeah. Okay, now, Thesis Gate, you were at the center of this saga, right? How much, uh, how much factor do you think Thesis Gate actually um, you know, factored into this coming election and, mm -hmm. and the campaigns of uh, each of the candidates? Okay. Um, I think the number of Taiwanese people who understand the thesis gate and believe that Chai Ing-wen is a fake doctor has gone from a tiny minority of less than 1% four years ago to an overwhelming majority of 90% now. Really? Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> so far, there have been more than 60 million discussions and videos, clips on the internet discussing this scandal between the president of Taiwan and the British academic community. Um, there are more than 10 politicians or political figures who, uh, I mean, less than, I think, less than 10 politicians and public figures who dare to publicly endorse Tsai Ing-wen's academic qualification nowadays. And coupled with the evidence we obtained from the British side, the case has become completely clear. What is lacking now is when Taiwan or Western media or Chinese media will conduct large scale investigations and reports. I think this topic is a rare subject to compete for the Pulitzer Award. Hmm, the Pulitzer, Pulitzer okay. Prize. <laughs> All right. Uh, wow. So that's interesting that now 90% of Taiwanese uh, are aware of this thesis gate scandal. Hmm. Wow. But, you know, if it is true that the president of Taiwan has a fake uh, doctorate, I don't think that will be the first time that we've seen a high level public figure um, not be so honest in their academic you know, uh, pursuits. As you know, recently, right, the hmm. former president of Harvard University, right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Claudine Gay, she herself has been exposed as um, has she's plagiarized like in over uh, 50 instances on her doctoral uh, thesis. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, this seems to be actually kind of common, right? <laughs> but she stepped on. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I will shoot. <laughs> right, yeah. Okay. Now, one thing that I've always been very curious about. Um, so in the U.S., right, 
after one party has been in power for a long time, typically the public gets tired, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at the U.S., um, after we had eight years of Bill Clinton, right? Yeah. Uh, the following election, we had Bush, right? Um, in 2008, after eight years of Bush, we switched again and we went to, uh, you know, Barack Obama. So give, given that, why is it that in Taiwan, though, after eight years of the DPP in charge, it seems like the Taiwanese public are still OK with the DPP? Because I think in recent polls, it shows that the DPP candidate, who is the current vice president, right, he is leading. So why is that? Uh, in terms of the votes gain or lose, the DPP, I think, will lose at least three million votes. Oh, really? Um, okay. Yeah, lose three million votes in this coming president election than the last time. If the ruling party still wins, it's not because they did a good job. It's because of the opposition parties are divided. Mm. Okay. So basically, the two other parties are splitting the vote. Yeah. Even <clears throat> <if. clears throat> well, <clears throat> let me ask you a question. And, um, you know. If you had to pick one of the two candidates from the opposition party, right? If one of them, if you had to choose one, which one do you kind of like more? Uh, well, pros and cons, bananas and apples. <laughs> As I mentioned before, I'm a rational, strategic voter. If I could vote, I would vote the one I perceive who is leading. Mm -hmm. So who is the one currently that is perceived as leading? It's really hard to say. Oh, really hard to say. Uh, okay. You know that most of the polls are controlled or manipulated by some political uh, organizations or for commercial interest in Taiwan. Right. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you, like, how reliable are the polls in Taiwan? <laughs> Sadly, that uh, almost all public opinion polling organizations in Taiwan have political mm -hmm. or business involvement. Right. Well, that's very uh, similar to U.S. too, right? I mean, all the right. polls here have uh, some some sort of, uh, you know, angle and spin to it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in the Chinese, Taiwanese, we don't call the Ming Diao as Ming Diao. We call it as a Ming Tiao because they adjust the result. Oh, they adjust the result. Okay. All right. The same <laughs> character with different meanings. Right. All right. Uh, I think all these polling organizations, they all attempt to use uh, manufactured political or public opinion poll mm -hmm. to influence voters strategic voting i have taught research methods and public opinion polling at the graduate institute of journalism at national taiwan university for 20 years i still don't understand why these survey agencies insist on using 50 percent of mobile phone samples and 50 percent of the home phones mm -hmm. in taiwan where in Taiwan, mobile phone penetration rate is as high as 90%. So this method doesn't make any sense to me. Right. I mean, in Taiwan, almost everybody has a mobile phone, right? Over 90%. Right, over 90%. Okay. I mean, so who are the people that would use a you know landline? Yes, what? A landline, like a home phone. Oh, okay. Um, I think, you know, the for business... Okay. Ah, okay. For um, retails like a uh, you know restaurant or something, right. or um, uh, old people they don't they don't want to use the uh, mobile phone because they don't have many contacts. Gotcha. So it's it's rather biased. Okay. Now, I know that you've got a lot at stake, right? Um, on what happens in this election, how will the outcome of this election? affect the charges against you uh okay okay uh well not much, not, not much. If, the, <laughs> if the current ruling party continues to be in power they would definitely hope that there will be as few a scandal as possible mm -hmm. if the other two opposition parties are in power they may pursue it but these are not important because um to me, I would ignite this topic in the media, political circles and academic circles around the world because academic fraud is uh, absolutely not allowed, no matter which country, no matter which system. Mm -hmm. 
But I mean, uh, in terms of your current uh, situation, right, your legal predicament, if the DPP were to continue being in power, um, it would essentially mean that you probably can't go back to Taiwan for a very, very long time, right? Uh -huh. uh, if the other two parties, if one of the other two parties win, that gives you some hope, right? That perhaps the charges might be dropped or, you know, lessened? Probably, yes. But no matter who in power, even in DPP, I will sue them in the United Nations, in the human rights organizations, in the right. media. I will keep fighting for those injustice, no matter who elected. Okay. Now, Dennis, uh, given your expertise on world affairs and journalism, uh, what are your other predictions um, for future geopolitical matters? Okay. Um, um, I think if the uh, current ruling party continues to be in power, relationships between Taiwan and China will continue to be tense in the next four years. But uh, I personally, um, I wouldn't, I, would, I don't think that the, um, there will be a war involved. However, uh, from the the United States side, uh, I would say um, the United States will be even busier for the next four years. Right. But the, uh, uh, the other two parties uh, to be in power, I would say the relationship between Taiwan and China will be um, getting improved. But it will not solve the fundamental uh, problems, which is the Taiwan's sovereignty cannot be um, still solved. And fundamentally, um, this problem, I think it's uh, uh, it will be a long battle okay. for the next years, no matter who wins the election. Okay. One last question, we'll let you go because we know you're very busy. So there have been some reports out of the intelligence community that you know from beijing's point of view they feel like by the year 2025 they will be militarily ready to invade taiwan if uh, uh, need be what are your thoughts on that do you think that's true uh personally i don't think the chinese would that be would be that stupid because that's a loose 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 situation and i personally or um um, ideologically believe and wish that the relationship between Taiwan and China were getting improved because at least we are brothers and sisters. No matter if you, you, you take it or not, at least we are neighbors. There are no reasons for neighbor, you know, uh, right. fighting each other. So I think no matter who wins this election, I strongly urge them Peaceful, peaceful. Peace, okay. So to recap, your prediction is that the current DPP party candidate wins by a very narrow margin, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it depends. Okay. It depends how the other, I mean, how the independent voters will, will use the strategic voting or not. What is the turnout rate for voting in Taiwan for presidential years? Usually it's 75% to... 80 percent wow that's a lot more than here in the u.s let me tell oh, you that. sure <laughs> because you don't have missile threatens we no. do have <laughs> true okay dennis how yeah. do our viewers uh follow you or if they want to reach out to you how would they go about doing that okay we have an english uh talk show channel true voice of taiwan my name is dennis Peng, you can Google me, Dennis Peng. You can email me, contact me at a very, um, it's very easy to, to memorize email address, which is youmaytalk at gmail.com. Y-O-U-M-A-Y-T-A-L-K. Youmaytalk at gmail.com. Okay, Dennis Peng, thank you so much for coming back on our show. You can find Dennis by going to his YouTube channel, uh, True Voice of Taiwan, correct? True Voice yes. of Taiwan. I think you have over 350,000 followers, right? Yes. And um, if you want to email Dennis, he's got a very easy uh, address. You may talk at gmail.com. Thank you. Dennis Peng, thank you so much for coming on Real Talk with Ronnie. And for our show, if you want to follow us, it's very easy. Just follow us on YouTube or on Rumble. Just go to 
at Real Talk with Ronnie, at Real Talk with Ronnie, or you can just go to our website, realtalkronnie.com, realtalkronnie.com. All the information is there on the screen on how you can contact us, reach us, uh, stay up to date. Dennis, thank you so much for uh, coming on, and uh, we'll be very excited to maybe perhaps have a follow-up uh, interview with you post-election to see if your predictions came true. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Lee. Okay, great. Thank you, and have a great evening, and Happy New Year. Thank you, everyone. Happy New Year. 喜欢我们的影片，请在下方点下订阅按钮，也别忘了开启旁边的小铃铛。谢谢大家。